Hey everybody, we're doing another species spotlight today and today we're going to be talking about the southern pine snake or the Florida pine snake or sometimes the eastern pine snake. As we all know, a lot of North American cluebirds get called a lot of different names. So first thing and foremost, these guys actually aren't a full species. This is actually a sub, one of the three subspecies of pine snakes. Now I already did a video about the northern pine snake, which is the namesake of the species Pituophis melanolucus. Pituophis being the genus Melanolucus in Latin, literally meaning black white. Um, and then that species of northern, that's Melanolucus Melanolucus. So black white, black white, black white, black white. These guys are Melanolucus mugatus or mugitus. I always mispronounce that, and pit people will probably yell at me uh, when they see this, but I'll put it up right here as always uh, because I could never pronounce it correctly. Um, these guys are very similar to almost all of the Pituophis genus, as well as the other three pine, the other two pine snake subspecies. So when we look at this animal, um, we can tell a lot by that. But first, let's get into a little bit more about where they come from. So these guys are found down in the southeastern United States, like most of the pine snakes. So as we look at the full species of the three, the northern to the top from parts of New Jersey all the way down the southeast, all the way down the uh, east coast, and then we get into the black pine snakes, which are in parts of like Alabama and Georgia. And then these guys, the southerns of the Florida pine snakes, obviously are found in Florida, uh, places in parts of Georgia, South Carolina, and Alabama. And as you can tell, you can see that they actually overlap in certain areas and they end up actually integrating, which is natural hybridization where their ranges overlap, which can lead to a lot of variety as they look further down the road. And speaking of looks, you can tell right here that these guys share a lot in common with like say a bull snake, which is also in the genus Pituophis, only that's a different one. The bull snakes and gopher snakes are different uh, species in the genus Pituophis, but still they're a fairly heavy bodied colubrid snake. The southern pine snakes are one of the smaller of the of the larger North American ones. They average four and a half to five feet with bull snakes and northern pine snakes averaging a little bit longer. Um, males, uh, because males are larger with Pituophis genus, um, they are usually a little bit larger because they actually combat and show off for the ladies. Um, so they average six plus feet with the northerns and bull snakes obviously being the largest with males getting over eight. Um, these guys four and a half to five feet. So a little bit more uh, moderate size kluber, but still heavy body. You can tell they have a little bit more body mass than say like a corn snake or a lot of the king snakes. They have those keeled scales. So similar to like say rattlesnakes, they, they're not as smooth. These keeled parts are part of essentially a bit of a natural defense being in areas where they're found more underground, where it's a little bit drier, where it's not as soft or as smooth. Um, and it also helps for uh, water retention, the way that they're shaped that way a little bit better. As well as like all Pituophis snakes, they have that modified epiglottis. Sorry, I keep adjusting my little mic right there. Um, what that is, the epiglottis, that's that breathing tube that they have, that snakes have. Um, and then you've actually, if you ever watched the videos of like the large constrictors eating those big prey items, you can see it kind of poking out the side. That allows them to be able to breathe while they eat those big prey items. Um, but the Pituophis have them and modified that allows air to pass over it a little bit differently, which gives them that very pronounced, very loud, iconic hissing sound. So like all snakes, the very first, you know, defense is to book it, get out of there. But if they feel cornered or they can't escape, all snakes have a second defense mechanism and that varies from species to species. With cobras and false water cobras and hognose, they'll hood up, they'll still hiss, but they hood up. Rattlesnakes, they'll sit there and they'll rattle. Um, with a lot of colubrid species, they mimic the rattlesnake where they'll wiggle their tail in like leaf litter on the ground where it can give that kind of rattlesnake sound because through mimicry, they can, they've can they learned that large hoof mammals and predators don't want to mess with the rattlesnake. Well, if they act and sound like a rattlesnake, they don't want to get messed with. These guys, with that modified epiglottis, they will do the tail rattling, then they'll raise up and look scary and, 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 and big and posture up, but then they'll also give that very loud hiss. It's actually louder than some of my larger boa constrictors. It's really loud. You can hear them from yards away. It's really, really cool. Um, and then they, after that, then they do a lot of bluff biting, just similar to like a lot of hog nose, um, like my Kribos and the Indigos will do that as well. And supposedly a lot of Cobras will do bluff biting as well. I guess a lot of species do that. It's kind of funny. But these guys are really cool. They're a little bit more diurnal than say like a lot of king snakes or a lot of the pythons or boas. 
They're still not fully nocturnal. They're more crepuscular. But these guys, you will find them out during the day a little bit more. Really active in the mornings and when it gets not too, too hot. But usually as the day heats up, the sun gets brighter overhead. A lot of snakes will duck down. A lot of reptiles in general will duck down and cover up until the evening or uh, till, till uh, night when they'll start to come out a little bit more. These are the ones that you'll find out more often. Um, these guys and probably the bull snakes you'll probably find out the most often. These guys, as I mentioned earlier, have a very varied, very varied appearance. Um, a lot of that has to do with their range. These guys have one of the larger ranges, the blacks obviously being the smallest because they're actually endangered. Um, but these guys are very varied, as a very varied. I'm just gonna keep saying that, I apologize. Um, typically when we think of the pine snakes, you know, we think of that black and white for the northern one because that's the namesake, the Melanolucus black and white. These guys, they usually have a little bit more of a ruddier or reddier orange coloration to them, but it's all over the place throughout the range. In the northern part where they overlap with the northerns, they can be almost that black and white coloration as well. They can be really pale with more red instead of black. They can be more yellow. They can be um, more orange. They can be almost more solid color all the way through. They can be really heavy, uh, heavy black as they integrate with the black pine snakes. And then they have actual distinctive morphs as well. As you can see, my only Florida pine snake or southern pine snake, whatever, right here is actually a pink leucistic. They have three distinct types of leucistic, yellow, pink, and white. They all have the blue eyes. They all have the white coloration, but the pinks have that really nice pink hue to them. The yellows have a yellow one, and then the whites are usually pure white. Now, obviously, you can tell that there's a lot of other coloration going on here. So is that like a white-sided or something going on like that? Well, actually, this guy specifically excuse me, uh, came from a rescue situation. He was being kept with a pair of northern pine snakes, with the northerns being significantly larger. That male northern pine snake was just beating him up, just grabbing him, tearing him around uh, because males will combat and fight for uh, attention of the female. So that's the larger of the males. That's what they do. And so with him being significantly smaller, he was just getting torn up. And so someone took him in and said, hey, Jay-Z, I know you're really into the pits, do you want this boy? And so I went over and I picked him up and he's been doing great ever since. He's actually an amazing pet reptile and I've now taken him to a couple different uh, reptile outreach programs as well. He's amazing for that. Um, these guys are really, really cool. They're very intelligent. As I said before, they're very active. They're more active diurnally so we can uh, document their behavior a little bit more. Um, these guys are actually part of a really cool ecosystem, especially down in Florida, uh, where even though they're really great burrowers, burrowers, they actually prefer to stay in other animals' burrows because they're already caved out for them. So for instance, pocket gophers, their namesake, um, as far as gopher snakes go, that's one of their main key prey items, as well as the gopher tortoise. Um, and the actual gopher tortoise in, uh, actually is a keystone species, which means that without the gopher tortoise, none of these other animals would be able to survive in the ecosystem. Uh, their burrows provide homes for over 350 species, these guys being one of them. Um, they're really, really, really cool. And because of so much of documentation and research into the gopher snakes, we've been able to learn a whole lot more about these guys. And it's also part of the reason why we learned all about like the different varieties of morphs and patterns throughout the localities and counties where these guys are found. If you decide that you do want to take one home as a pet, um, keeping them is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Um, kept very similar to like the other pine snakes. Um, maybe a little bit more humidity because that's where they're found a little bit further south, a little bit more humidity. So maybe give them a couple humid hides um, or like a bull snake, very similar to that. So with these guys being larger colubrids, being very active, giving plenty of space, I think at least a four foot enclosure of some kind is very well for these guys with really a lot of the pits. Four feet I think is good for an adult as a good starting point. Um, give them places to climb. And as I mentioned before, they love to burrow. So give them plenty of deep substrate, give them multiple hides. Um, you've seen me do a couple different of the northern pine snake videos where I always have two or more hides on the hot and the warm side. Same with these guys. Temps, you know, kind of that room temp, the mid 70s to 80s. They really start to kind of stress out if you get them too, too hot. Um, so if you're going to give them, you know, nice full spectrum lighting because they do like that full spectrum lighting. They like to move around. They do bass. They seek out that UVA. Um, you know, make sure that you don't get it too, too hot. Like really nothing over about 90 is really a little too hot for them, um, which is actually why in this building I've been struggling a little bit. It's getting a little bit warm, but I'm working on that too. Um, these guys are really, really, really cool. Um, little final fun fact about these guys. 
um, is that in the wild of the three species, um, the northerns and the southerns are actually uh, considered of least concern. Sorry, the reed frogs are growing. It's like nine o'clock here right now. Um, and then the black pine snakes are actually endangered, similar to like Louisiana pine snakes or the eastern indigos, where you, it requires special permitting to ship across state lines. These guys, not so much. However, because all pine snakes really do require specific habitats, um, as I've talked about in other videos before, sorry about that, uh, is they like the long flat leaf pine barrens. Um, they love the loose, sandy, well-drained soil that they need for laying their eggs. Um, they, they move, they travel a lot. So habitat fragmentation plays a huge part in a loss of habitat and a loss of populations of these different snake species, specifically like Louisiana's and the Eastern Indigo's. These guys aren't impacted as much. They're not nearly as specialized. However, they still do need that more than say like a king snake or a water snake or even like a rattlesnake. Um, populations are starting to decline. And we've seen that, especially as we see with, you know, further logging, further industry. Um, they will cut down old growth flat leaf pine barrens and they'll put up uh, new imported, uh, in, not necessarily invasive, but foreign trees that we use for timber and for our purposes that doesn't support the ecosystems that these guys are found in um, during rattlesnake roundups, which is still a huge issue that we have going on, especially in the southeast part of the United States, uh, where they'll just go in and they'll gas rattlesnake, uh, gopher, gopher tortoise burrows looking for rattlesnakes and they'll just pick up and kill any snake that they can pick up. And these guys are found in a lot of the same habitat as say like the Eastern rattlesnakes, Eastern diamondback rattlesnakes. So while these guys aren't of least aren't endangered yet, this is something that we need to kind of keep in mind and be aware of that these guys are a little bit more sensitive to that habitat loss and fragmentation um, and human encroach than say, as I said before, water snake or garter snake or something like that. Um, sorry, I ended that kind of on a bit of a bummer. Um, I absolutely love the Pituopus genus. They are so cool. Um, I've said it before in plenty of other things where I fell in love with boa constrictors. Ball pythons are kind of cool with the morphs and stuff. But then I discovered colubrids. And I got into like the, the corn snakes and the king snakes. And then I discovered pits. These guys are so cool. They're so active. They're intelligent. They're observant. They remember things. They're really, really cool. It's like having a, a really interesting, it's, it's almost like a lizard or like a tego or a monitor where they're more active. They seek out individuals. It's so, so cool. I love these guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have, if you want to go check out the playlist that I have of all of the other species spotlights, I'll put it right here. We have well over 30 at this point. Um, I plan on doing some more down the road. I'm running low on species that I work with anymore. I'll be reaching out to people that I can actually physically have the animals in front of you where I talk a little bit more in depth than like the top five videos that I do. Um, that way I can actually like have the animal in front of me when I'm talking to everybody about that. So if you guys have any ideas for future ones, please let me know down below. I know several of you have in the past. I have it written down in my little, in my little snake notebook that I keep all of my notes in. I'm gonna get to them. I just don't have them, so I want to be able to do a little bit more research and actually physically have the animal in front of me when I do present that to everybody. Um, any other video ideas, let me know down in the comments if you want to hit up my other social media, Instagram, Facebook. I try to do TikTok. I'm really bad at it. Um, if you would like to, it'd be greatly appreciated. Certainly not. Just everybody watching the videos is always great. If you want to check out my Patreon, a um, bunch of different levels. They start off really low, only a dollar, and it goes up with different rewards, merch, you know, we have the the, po the podcast, little wristbands, different t-shirts, uh, videos, and everything like that. It'd be super great. If not, thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody who watches these guys. Thank you so much for the great interactions. I love being able to do this and being able to interact and just teach and share my love for these guys so, so much. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a great day, and we'll check you next time.